Hi, and welcome to Voices of the Valley, episode three. Um, I'm Andrew Buckman. I'm Joel Haas. Um, and let's get right into headlines. Um, so first off, uh, women's hockey swept Syracuse um, over the weekend, uh, securing the CHA championship um, in pretty dominant fashion. They killed Syracuse, wasn't even close. Yeah, um, I think that's only one loss in CHA play that they're going to finish with. Um, so they should be heavy favorites to win the conference tournament as well. Um, we'll go over to the men's side. They had a split with number seven, Ohio State. Um, it was not what you wanted, I guess, if you're Penn State after winning the first one. Um, it's a very tight race right now in the Big Ten for, for postseason seeding. Um, but the team moved up one in in the USCHO poll and they're up to number five in Intermet as well. You mean <laughs> not um, Intermet, uh, pairwise. Pairwise. Yeah. Um, Intermat, funnily enough, is wrestling, uh, and, uh, uh, the wrestling team beat Ohio State, uh, 29 to 9, and then Indiana, 35 to 8, continuing their yet again dominant run in Big Ten play. Um, they're the best team in the country, just, I mean, uh, there's not much else to say other than that. Yeah. Um, men's lacrosse opened the season with a win over Lafayette, um, looked good there, They'll play Villanova next in the second game of the season. Last year, they also opened the season by beating Lafayette. Then they went on to lose to Villanova. So they're hoping for a different outcome this season. Um, yeah, and then uh, men's basketball uh, could be out of the NCAA tournament with a loss to Nebraska. Um, Nebraska was 10-13 and 13 going to that game. Um, Penn State got down early, never really came back, and uh, doesn't look good for them. Yeah, men's volleyball is up to number three in the rankings. They took down two top 10 teams in the Big Ten Pac-12 Challenge. That was USC and UCLA. Um, so two big wins there. Their only loss on the season was to number two Long Beach State. So still a very impressive resume for men's volleyball. Yep. Cool. Um, and next up, we'll have a guest. All right. We now have three-fourths of the 2022 Daily Collegiate Baseball beat here. Um, so obviously we're going to be talking about some baseball today. We've got Sam Wollison as our guest today. Um, so we're going to be going over our thoughts on the team heading into the season. Cool. Um, so Sam, tell us about what you think the, the current state of the team is. I mean, obviously we went to the, the Big Ten tournament for first, first time in Rob Cooper era, which is kind of embarrassing, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, but what do you think, what are their prospects for this coming year? Um, yeah, I think that they're... They definitely should be able to improve from last season because I feel like they're returning a lot of players and they got some really important transfers, I feel. So you lose Matt Wood, who is obviously the best player on the team, arguably the best player in the whole Big Ten, at least from a batting standpoint. But I think you still keep a lot of experienced players, um, especially in the pitching staff. Almost everybody returns. So on paper, I feel like they should be able to do just as good, if not better, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, as far as the starting nine, I feel like the only major difference is obviously Matt Wood um, after going in the fourth round to the Brewers. But um, Spiegel obviously has proven to be a very capable catcher in the past. And then you have the transfer of Thomas Bramley as well. Um, so he should also be able to step in. And I think they'll both split time behind the plate. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I think the the loss of Matt Wood, though, is something we can't kind of brush over I mean you guys have said he's a big big fourth round pick he's a, an incredible batter but I think replacing him in the in the lineup as far as hitting goes is the biggest challenge that Penn State will have I think Johnny Piancentino will need to take a big step in the lineup and kind of get back to where he was as a sophomore when he was you know hitting 330 or whatever it was um but, Sam, I don't know what you kind of think Johnny's role will be or what you think the outfield looks like without, you know, um, Cole Bartles back there helping his his veteran presence without. But just, you know, yeah. what is your thoughts there? Well, from a fielding standpoint, I think they'll be fine um, returning the three guys they have, Gerlot, um, Taven Kelly, and Piacentino. I think at the plate, you definitely lose something, I think. Piacentino has the potential. It kind of... We've seen good things. We've seen bad things. I feel like he's been streaky. So we'll kind of see about that. Um, and then you got Kelly and Gerlot, who I think would look for bounce back seasons from last year. Yeah. 
Um, just looking at this year's schedule, I don't know how much you've had a chance to really break it down, but were there any like notable matchups that stood out to you this year? Um, I mean, I think the very first matchup, right? The series against Miami. Yeah. Now, I, I don't think anybody is expecting Penn State to come in there and like win the series, right? But I think that is going to be a like a really good measuring stick game right away. Like, because if they can compete with Miami in close games, even if they get swept, if they stay close throughout, that's like a huge confidence booster to play with a ranked team like that. Like, I think that goes a long way. Right. And that one's going to be in Florida as well, which is unfortunate. And then you also go at, um, you got at North Carolina later in the year. So two tough ACC schools uh, on the slate this year. I don't believe they played, or they played UVA last year, got swept. Um, so Penn State, obviously not a great history against the ACC. Um, they'll, look, they'll look to change that this year. I don't know how much success they'll really have there. Um, they start Big Ten play going on the road against Michigan. That's another tough one. Um, they have the home and homes against Pitt and West Virginia like they did last year. Um, a lot of similarities, honestly, in the non-conference um, going back to last year as well. But I think the key um, this year will be having a stronger performance in the non-con. Um, you really don't want to have another losing record um, outside the Big Ten because that's just starting your season off on the wrong foot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, I think every year Rob Cooper gets closer and closer to losing his job, and I think that last year he got this little bit of cushion um, because he finally made the Big Ten tournament. But I think if they take a big step back, which I, like you said, Sam, I don't think it's going to happen because I do think that they should be better. I think that they brought in some key transfers like Daniel Outerkirk and Bramley, like, like Joel said. But I think that there's always a possibility when your coaching isn't necessarily up to the level that it could be, um, in my opinion. But um, I don't know, Sam, what, do you, what are your thoughts on what, what does Rob Cooper need to do to, to continue to progress and to keep his job? Well, obviously, like, you got to have success on the field, first and foremost. Um, and I think to try and get that, he's got to try and continue to stack these good transfer classes. Because Penn State's done some work in the transfer portal between the last, like, two seasons. I know they got Jordan Morales out of there last year, and he's been a really good addition to the bullpen. Um, Lundsman. Yeah, Lundsman, Lundsman as well. Yeah, in fact, a lot of their big players are from the transfer portal. They got Pitaro last year. He could maybe take a big step forward. So I think, like, as a recruiter, like, and as, like, trying to get transfers in, I think that's how he kind of has to make his difference. Like, he's got to just build a more talented team. Like, that's their best chance to have success. Yeah, I feel like he's really utilized the transfer portal in recent years. Um, so we talked a lot about last year. They finished with a 26-29 and 29 record. Um, obviously, sub-500 did make the Big Ten tournament, won one game. Um, before getting bounced, do you anticipate an improvement in record from last year to this year? Um, it's honestly tough because I think the out of conference is just like harder straight up. Like, yeah. So they gotta win the games that are winnable. Um, mm -hmm. against teams like Bucknell, I know they play, and some of those other smaller schools. Like they cannot slip during that. Um, and then Big Ten is a toss up. I think the Big Ten's like really close in like talent level overall besides like maybe the top two or three teams so it's kind of like a flip of the coin really like they could do better they could do worse like it, it's just like it's just a flip of the coin cool i mean um so so we we're talking a little bit about Wood earlier i mean i don't think there's much replacing a fourth round pick especially at a school like penn state that doesn't necessarily have a rich history of mlb draft picks and Maybe that's changing. Matt, maybe Matt Wood is setting the standard. I mean, I don't think anyone's current team is going to do it. I mean, Jay Harry has a chance to be drafted at some point, and maybe if Johnny and Josh have big years, maybe they do too, but I doubt they'll come anywhere close to the fourth round. Um, but um, what are you, what what is the possibility that, say, someone like I don't know, Tyson Cooper <laughs> replaces Matt Wood? In that in that role at catcher, I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Like Tyson Cooper specifically. Replacing Tyson Cooper him? specifically, yeah. No one else. Just I mean, to be honest, I don't know where he's getting the playing time. Like, cause they got, cause they have Spiegel and they have Bramley who can play. Mm. Um, 
I don't know, maybe he works his way into a DH role. I mean, he could be putting in work, like, <laughs> in the offseason, who knows. Yeah, we did see Cooper get some some time at designated hitter last season as well, so I feel like that would be the easiest path to, to playing time this season. Um, do you anticipate Penn State making its second consecutive Big Ten tournament appearance? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's a disappointment if they don't, right? I mean, they're coming off one last year, and like I said, I think the team got better. Like, I think that's got to be the expectation to get that far at least this season. Yeah, I think I think the pressure's on this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you've shown that you can do it, but you got to do it again, have that sustained success, or else the seat's going to start to get a little bit hot, in my opinion. Do you think they have a shot at a Big Ten tournament? Like, what is their ceiling? Like, can they win a title? I mean, sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely Why could. Not? Um, Like, they definitely could win a title. I think, like, a realistic goal is make the tournament for sure, maybe yeah. try and advance, like, another round than he did last year but I think for culture building just to get in a postseason tournament consistently is big for just like the team morale the fan base like getting kids to want to come in for especially through the transfer portal so I feel like that's kind of your goal yeah and Rob Cooper's kind of champion this this recruiting through Pennsylvania thing and staying close to home but I think if he really wants to win and to you actually gotta go make, yeah. yeah, you gotta go anywhere else but yeah. Pennsylvania. I mean, like you can get all the Pennsylvania guys you want, but you're if you're losing, like he's losing in Pennsylvania. He's mm. not even winning in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The top guys are not staying at Penn State, and that's a reality that he has to to face. Right. Yeah. If you can get down into to SEC territory, yeah. mm-hmm. that's that's where you're really that's cooking. True. There, you might find some some hidden gems there, which is probably Penn State's best chance at getting some some better talent um, through recruiting. Yeah, and I mean, um, they should do that through the transfer portal, too. Like, look mm-hmm. at look at guys that aren't playing at SEC schools because a lot of those guys are going to be better than the guys at Penn State that are starting. Right. They've mm-hmm. pulled in transfers from, from other good yeah. um, college teams. Like, um, they've gotten transfers from West Virginia, uh, Duke, um, Vanderbilt. Um, so they've definitely done that strategy before. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think that's the way to go if you're Penn State. Um, okay. We'll hit you with a, a quick would you rather. Okay. So option number one is get hit with a Travis Lundsman fastball. Okay. We'll say to the ribs. Sure. Right, right in the ribs. Uh, what, what is that topping out at? Like, what, what We're looking like... at, I want to say that's 96. I think, I think, it, I think, I think okay. he's hitting 96. 96 like to the ribs, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> or get stuck in the elevator at Medlar. <laughs> now, if you get stuck in the elevator, you don't know how long you're in there. Right. It could be five minutes. You could be in there for days. That's the risk you take. So. <laughs> right. Um, did, I feel like that happened last year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Um, <laughs> maybe that was a on, rickety elevator. I took the stairs, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like I would rather just like wait in the elevator okay. than eat that fastball. So, so no, That's like fine. you don't have claustrophobia or anything like that? No. Like, I feel like the no, water, the water situation might get dicey yeah, after a little bit. <laughs> but you could theoretically like climb through the top of the elevator. That's another I option. Like, I don't know how I mean, good I you are. Like are like, I mean, I haven't <laughs> tried to climb through an elevator. I hope I never have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So moral of the story is take the stairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and avoid Travis Lundsman because that man can sling it. Um, do you, well, I don't know why this question is on here, but I'm going to ask it. You put it on there. Oh, did, did you, do you, or did you, or did you not agree that sports are not that deep? Oh. Like, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm kind of accusing you of oh, saying Oh, shoot. That. Oh, I didn't know there were, like, spies in the room at that yeah, moment. Yeah, man, it's, uh. Yeah, I guess I did kind of say that, huh? Not... It's a bad look. Just Shout by out. the way, I don't know if we said it, but Sam is a, a sports editor for the Daily Collegian, so that's kind of yeah. crazy. Shout out to the It's Not That Deep <laughs> podcast. Yeah, um, maybe maybe if they drop a, their next podcast, you guys will be able to see that. But If it ever oh. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, please answer the, the question. Well, I said I said it. Do you want me to like explain yeah i mean i don't remember the exact context of it but i was just thinking like like when you're talking about like hard news and politics and stuff like obviously like sports aren't like that like to me sports is like it's fun and it's a hobby and i love covering it and i love writing it but like i guess that's like what it is to me you know like i think some people just take it a little bit too serious we'll finish out with one hot take so sam if you have any hot takes Penn State baseball or otherwise that you want to give us right now? 
Um, all right, let me think. Okay. I'll do hot take. I think that um, Josh Spiegel could top Matt Wood's batting average from last year. Wow. It's hot. So my, my thinking is, is that I thought Spiegel was excellent last season. Um, <laughs> that's my reason. I thought he was great last season. I think he should take a step forward. Um, like, he was always kind of, like, this really good, like, deep ball hitter, I thought. And I think, like, just get a little more contact in his game. I could definitely see him hitting in the 300s um, this season. Cool. All right. Um, we can do this pretty quickly, but um, let's do our – we're going to have Sam rank his top five coaches at Penn State. Okay. Um, okay, so number one has to be Kale Sanderson. Um I mean, I know, I know you don't like that, but, like, I mean... Like, I am I am the biggest Guy Godowski proponent on the planet. Joe Tuman will never match me when it comes to Guy Godowski, even though he thinks he does. But continue, Sam. No, go for it. Yeah, no, I mean, it has to be, right? Wrestling's, okay, like, a enough. huge dynasty. I mean, yep. this is the greatest wrestler of all time. This yep. is, like, he probably will be one of the best coaches. It's got to be him. Yep. Number two, I was on the fence between two and three. I went with um, uh, Char Moret Curtis for field hockey. Um, she has an insane resume. She's okay. been doing it for a long time. Um, and, I mean, Penn State field hockey is, like, one of the best in the sport consistently year sure. in, year out. Um, three, I chose Mark Pavlik, kind of for the same reasons. I think, oh I mean, volleyball is, like, crazy, both men's and women's, how good they consistently are. And, like, Mark himself is, like, a great dude. Like, he's so nice to the media like, he opens up his office. It's literally, like, office hours. They can just come in and, like, ask questions, like... Um, Not that like, that impacted yeah. Pick or anything, though. <laughs> no, well, I'm saying he's a great guy, right? <laughs> right like, yeah. he's a great guy. Where that we're going for on-field performance yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, the team speaks for itself, Fair right? Enough. They're they're third in the country right now. Yeah. Um, then fourth, I put your boy Guy Godowski. Finally, God I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just, like, he's been there less. So I think he, like, has, like... like He's just got to be there longer, and he can surpass those other people. But what he's done with the program since taking it over, like, like it's been amazing. Like, for sure. Love for Guy Godowski. And then fifth, I put Erica Dombak um, because women's soccer, again, it's like it's another one of those superpowers in the, um, in the country. Penn State has a lot of really good sports that just don't get the attention that football and basketball do. I don't like that at all I think mm. that they deserve it because they're so good at everything and Tom Back's a great coach and she's just built this really strong program so that's cool. my five all right you just want to go back and forth real quick with ours yeah okay um I'll go I'll knock that out real quick so I had the same top four in a different order okay um but for the most part we agreed my fifth was Micah Shrewsbury Fair. I know it's a very limited sample size but I feel like he's already um, put together, you know, two of the, the best teams in program history, which isn't saying too much, but they have been knocking down some records recently mm-hmm. already. Um, again, you know, that's not yeah. super hard to do, but it is kind of impressive um, what he's done in his first two years. Cool. Um, my one is Guy. My two is Kale. My three is Erica. My four is Shar. And then my five, I want to say Micah... But Micah hasn't done anything, so I'll go with Mark Pavlik. Solid. Cool. Uh, so that was Sam. Um, as I say every week, long time goat. Um, when there's one week that I don't say that, just know that that person's not a goat. Um, but anyway, um, we'll do our superlatives. So Joel, if you want to start off. Cool. Yeah, our team of the week mentioned it at the top of the show. Uh, men's volleyball took down two top ten teams. Big Ten Pac-12 Challenge that was hosted at Rec Hall. Um, they did it in four sets both times, and obviously just two huge victories. Um, beating number two UC- UCLA was huge, um, obviously going in as underdogs to that one. Yep. Um, and then player, uh, we're going to go with Izzy Heminger, who is a defenseman for the women's hockey team. Um, she became the all-time leader in point or in assists by a defense defenseman uh for women's hockey um and she had two assists and was named cha defender of the week um so shout out to izzy cool i I think think that's it yeah that's it tune in next week uh like subscribe 
Um, me. Follow me on Twitter at Buckman Sports. Um, that's it. See ya.